The Rescue Worker, a lifelong transformational journey of Jesus' apprentices, learning to love, serve, and be like the Master. Experiencing Jesus in the Gospel of Luke with Dr. Douglas Pereira. Welcome to the Rescue Worker. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Experiencing Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. We are on this lifelong transformational journey of Jesus' apprentices, learning to love, serve, and be like the Master. As you know, Jesus' apprentices have one motto, one motto that we live for, and the motto is, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. That is the motto that the Jesus, Jesus apprentices, Jesus disciples, they live for, to love God, to love the neighbor, and to love ourselves. At the end, love is the center of everything. As you know, we are finishing our week today, our third week of our project, Experiencing Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. And each week we have a memory verse. And the memory verse for this week is and was, Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because He has visited and redeemed His people. Repeat with me and after me, Praise the Lord, the God of Israel because he has visited and redeemed his people. I think that summarizes this, this, the, the heart of our week. Jesus coming, God becoming flesh and dwelling among us. And we have studied the birth of Jesus, the shepherds coming to visit him. And today we will study what happened after eight days of his birth but before we study and reflect on that we'll try to grasp a few main ideas i want to give you the opportunity to prepare yourself for god's word we believe that every time we come into the bible we are coming before the throne of grace we are coming before the throne before god and we have this beautiful promise of Hebrews 4.16. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we'll receive His mercy and we'll find grace to help us when we need it the most. So God is inviting us to be in His presence. And I'm so glad that you have accepted His call today. So before we go and spend time with God and His Word, I want to give you one minute for you to prepare yourself for this divine encounter. So take one minute now for you and for God.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your blessings, for your guidance, and for Jesus Christ. At this moment that we are coming before the throne of grace, we pray that we will hear your voice, feel your presence, and receive the grace and mercy that you have reserved for us. Bless us, Lord, on our study. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, take your Bible and open and look chapter 2, verse 21. We have a study on chapter 2, how Jesus came to life, his birth, the shepherds and the angels. And now, pay attention. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived. Short verse, verse but I think with few important ideas. I want to call your attention about the similarities of this report in the account of John at the time that he was eight days of birth he also was circumcised and he also was given the name the name that the angel has prophesied introduced to uh, Zachariah you see there's a parallel here somehow Luke wants us to keep in mind John that play an important um, role on the coming of the Messiah. He is trying to connect us with the prophets of the angel that he did, Gabriel, presented to Mary on chapter 1. He's trying to keep us in connection and, and keep in mind, hey, this baby is a miraculous baby. This baby is the baby that it has been promised by the prophets and presented in the Hebrew Bible. This baby is the one, the Messiah. So after eight days of birth, counting the day of birth, Jesus was circumcised. I have explained a little bit about circumcision on the episode that we we talked about the circumcision of John the Baptist. And I want to encourage you maybe to listen to that again uh, if you don't uh, remember what the circumcision means. Um, but in a sense, circumcision was the sign, the physical sign of um, a covenant between God and humans. If you remember, when Abraham received God's invitation to follow him and go with him to the land that God would show him, God proposed a covenant, a contract. And the heart of this contract, this covenant, was God saying, I want to be your God. You see, at the time, the people's worshipped many gods and God said Abraham I want to be your only God but I want to have you as mine so let's come into this relationship this covenant and Abraham accepted that and the sign the illustration of this covenant was the circumcision. So Jesus, as he was circumcised, he was part of this covenant, this relationship, saying, God is my God. I'll serve him. 
I will obey him. I will love him. And we can see that on Jesus' life all the time. He will not do anything without asking for the Father's direction. He would ask God, what is my agenda for today? He would not present his agenda and ask God to bless his agenda, his schedule. He would come to the Father and say, what do you expect from me today? He had this relationship of this covenant. Jesus was under this covenant. And Jesus received the love of the Father. Jesus was part of this fellowship of this covenant. And if Jesus was part of that, imagine you and I. We need to have this loving relationship. We need to recognize that God is the only one and the only one that is worthy of our worship and surrender. And we need to do that. Today, we don't need to be circumcised to demonstrate that we are part of this covenant. Today, we go to baptism. The baptism through waters is the sign of this covenant, of this relationship between man and God. So, Jesus, he made himself under the law. He made himself um, a servant of God. And you and I must do the same because we are Jesus' apprentices, learning to love, serve, and be like him. But I want to call your attention about Jesus' parents because Jesus was circumcised according to the Jewish law on the eighth day because his parents took him for the circumcision what that means to me his parents were believers they understood the covenant and they were faith faithful on their beliefs they were pious believers and they made a major influence on the development of Jesus leading Jesus to surrender to have a relationship with God to be obedient to God the parents made the difference and you you also has an influence an impact for those around you but in special for the parents you see when you put God in first and your kids see that because our kids they learn more from example than words so if your kids see you doing putting God first setting time to have a relationship with him acting like Jesus, loving like Jesus, serving like Jesus, the probability for the kids to do the same is much higher than a kid, a child that doesn't have that reference. I'm not saying that if you are a great Christian, Jesus' apprentice, reflecting Jesus' love and service, being like Jesus, that your child would follow the, your exactly steps. I'm not saying that. I'm not affirming that. But I'm affirming that if the child sees your example, the probability for him to follow Jesus' steps is higher than if you're not. You see, the kids, they have their their own decision to make if they're small in the future if they are adults or young adults or even uh, late teenagers they can make their own decisions for themselves but if the seed of a good example is there that can makes all the difference 
sometimes the parent do does not uh, prioritize God. God is just one item of a long list. And if the parent has some time left, then he'll come to God. If the parent is not involved, involved in the church, if the parent is not involved in the mission, if the parent is not loving like Jesus loved, and the parent is not serving like Jesus served, if the parent is not living the life of Jesus today, that child will not have a reference. However, if you're a Jesus apprentice, you can make a major influence and impact the salvation of your children. So be faithful. And maybe you're not a parent. I can tell you that you have an impact and an influence to the people around you. So how you impact them, how you influence them for good or for bad. I pray that you'll be faithful to God and give a great example. So because Jesus' parents were faithful believers and obedient to God, they circumcised Jesus and gave his name. They gave the name to the baby to Jesus as the angel had said. Jesus. The name Jesus means Yahweh saves. Yahweh is the Savior. Jesus would be in the Hebrew Bible Joshua. So Jesus carries in its name the mission for his coming, for his birth. To declare that God saves and God is saving. Through Jesus, you and I can be saved. Saved by God. When humankind disobeyed God, God had all the excuses to say, you know what? You made your decision. Now figure out. You resolve your problem. I told you, you're not supposed to eat of the fruit. I told you. So now it's your problem. However, he's a loving God. And because he's loving God, he went after his children. To visit them and redeem them. Because God is love, he sent salvation. Jesus Christ, the salvation from God, because God saves. And the salvation of God is not only the salvation of sin or the penalty of sin. The wages of sin, according to Romans 6.23, is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God through Jesus Christ is the eternal life. So when Jesus comes, yes, he forgives our sins when we accept him. He paid the price at the cross. But the process of salvation of Jesus doesn't stop on the forgiveness of our sins. But go much beyond on the restoration of God's image in us. Jesus desires to restore the connection, the fellowship between God and humankind. Jesus aims and works so you and I can be reflect the character, the values of the kingdom. Jesus aims us to um, understand the reason we were created and do our divine purpose. He wants to restore that. He wants to restore community because he was, we were created, created according to a communal God, a, a God that existed in community. He wants to uh, 
uh, restore the responsibility that each person have to influence and help other people on their development. And he wants to restore the mission of humankind to save others, to be part of this restoration movement. Somehow that is the goal of the rescue worker to help you, to encourage you, to provide, to provide resources so you can join hands in the work of restoration that Jesus is doing in your life. So, Jesus, baby Jesus received his name to carry a declaration, God saves and he is saving. And he wants to save you. Save you from the sins or from the penalty of sin. But he wants to save you from this image. This image that does not reflect God. He wants to restore the character, the likeness of God. And you and I must submit ourselves to this transformation. So, two main ideas here. First, pay attention to the influence that you are exercising, exercising with those around you and with your children, if that's the case. And make sure that Jesus is a reality in your life for the forgiveness of your sins and for the restoration of God's image in you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you for the assurance that Jesus is our Savior. And Lord, help us to be good influences for those around us, for our kids, grandkids, neighbors, relatives, so as we interact with them, they will see Jesus in us because we are loving, serving, being like Jesus. Bless everyone, Lord, and forgive our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, are you ready for our questions? The seven questions for each day? And here they are. The first question what is happening in this passage? What stuck out to me? What can I learn about God and his kingdom? And what ways has Jesus loved and served? How should I love and serve according to Jesus' example, to God's example? What specific steps can I take to apply these lessons in my life? Who can I share these lessons with others how can i share these lessons with others today well i pray that you reflect on these questions these questions that are trying to encourage you to meditate and trying to apply what we have studied and i pray that you understand that god wants to save you so you can make the difference in other people's life through your influence impacting those far from you but very close to you may god bless you i hope to see you next week as we start the fourth week of this journey of experiencing jesus in the, in the gospel of luke may god bless you and i hope to see you soon Experiencing Jesus in the Gospel of Luke.